We're picking up lesson 4.7 today at example 2, letter B. So you should have Desmos opened by now, and you should be plugging in your equations. Give me the first equation that you typed in for letter B. Y equals 1. Y equals 1. All right, remember, Desmos will recognize Y or it will recognize F of X. This problem that I gave you has y equals. So y equals 1. Now let's talk through how we put in the domain, okay, or the boundary. Because if you don't remember, this is gonna, where you're going to get lost. All right, we need the keyboard. What button do we hit on the keyboard so that we can input the boundary? Does anybody remember? The ABC button. Once we hit the ABC button, we go four buttons over to the brace. Some uh, people were trying to do uh, the brackets. The brackets won't work, all right? Make sure you're typing in the brace, and then you're putting, uh, you're hitting the one, two, three button again. Now, what was the boundary for this first equation? X is less than, X is less than negative three, all right? And again, you hit that little rounded arrow button because that is your enter button. And now you only have the piece of the line that you need. Now, what was the second equation that you typed in? Give me the whole equation, because if I just put x minus 1 into Desmos, it's not going to recognize it. So give me the whole thing. y equals x minus 1. Now, again, you can see it's the whole piece because I haven't put the boundary in yet. So ABC, I hit the brace button, and I hit 1, 2, 3. What was the boundary for the second one? Negative three. I should have more than one person helping me here, okay? Negative three is less than or equal to x and less than or equal to three, all right? And again, we can see we have the piece. And then what is the third Mason and final equation that we are plugging in here? All right, y equals negative two x plus four. We hit the ABC button, we hit the brace, we hit the one, two, three button, and you said the boundary was X is greater than three. Is that correct? All right, so we have the three pieces of our piecewise function. Now, think back to yesterday. What was the next equation that we needed to put into Desmos? And remember, we're putting it into Desmos so that we don't forget to put it on our paper. If you insist on not putting it into Desmos, I can't really stop you because I'm not going to be looking at every single one of your Desmos. However, if you forget to put it in Desmos, there's a greater chance you're going to forget to actually put it on your paper. But what's the next equation that I taught you yesterday to put into Desmos? To find and type in the boundary line. Now, the boundary line is where one graph stops and the next graph begins. So this piece stops right here, and I'll show you up here. This first piece stops right here, and it starts right here, okay? You can see if you run along the uh, y-axis that this one stops where this one starts. Over here, the blue graph stops and the green graph starts. So how many boundary lines are you going to have on this problem? You're going to have two. Okay, now we know that these are vertical lines and how did we learn to write the equation of a vertical line? See, a lot of you remember hoy and you remember vux, but you don't actually remember what it means. Because hoy it means a horizontal line has a slope of zero and an equation of y equals a number. Okay, but our line is vertical. So what did, what did vux mean? A vertical line has a slope that is undefined. The slope is undefined and an equation of what? X. X equals a number, all okay? right? So when we type in these boundary lines, we're typing in X equals some number, all right? The problem is, or the question is, what does X equal? Does anybody know what X equals or how we would find it? All right, there's two ways you can find this. You can either follow the graph where one star, uh, stops and the other starts, and you can figure out where that imaginary line crosses the x-axis, okay? Or you can just go to the boundaries. What number or numbers do you see in the boundaries? You've got to look at all three of them. What do you see? 
3. So one of our boundary lines is x equals 3. And what is the other number you see in the boundaries? Negative 3. So the other boundary is x equals negative 3. Now remember, if you hit the wheel, it allows you to change these boundary lines to those dashed or uh, dotted lines. Okay. Now do you see how much clearer these are? Yesterday we had our boundary line laying on top of the y-axis. So it was hard to see. All right, but this is very, very clear. So the first thing you need to transfer onto your paper right now, go onto your notes, transfer those boundary lines. Make those lines dotted. You can use your pencil, you can use your highlighter. Some of you were using a highlighter yesterday, but either way, don't forget the boundary lines. They're gonna be part of the grade. So they're not technically having to go into Desmos, but if you put them into Desmos, you'll remember to put them on your paper, okay? So plot. The boundary lines or graph or draw the boundary lines now we have to start graphing the pieces okay and this is where it gets a little bit tougher let's go to the first piece you say miss johnson what are you calling the first piece well i'm going to work left to right always because that's how we look at graphs so when i say the first piece i'm talking about this piece right here all right what is the end point of this first piece what point lies on the boundary line? Give me the coordinates of that point. One. Negative three, one. All right, now remember, you can zoom in and you can zoom out if you want more accurate points, but she is correct, okay? Negative three, one. But notice I didn't actually plot the point yet because I have to go to the boundary and I have to see if my point is going to be open or my point is going to be closed. So everybody go look at the boundary of that first equation, and the symbol is just less than. So should my endpoint be open or should my endpoint be closed? Mm, the symbol is just less than. Open. What did we learn? If our inequality symbol is just greater than or just less than, our circle is open. So our point actually has to be open. And remember, we're not doing big ginormous points, all right? It's still a normal point on a line, but we've got to make it clear that it is open. Okay, we want one more point. Give me one more point on this line. Give me the coordinates, doesn't matter. Okay, negative five, I heard negative five, one, which is right here. Now remember, the second point you choose is a normal point. There's no open or closed, it's just gonna be a normal point. Now, take your ruler, remember to start at the end point. I hope that you understand that your line should never go through the end point. It's not going through in the in Desmos, so it should make sense to you. Your line starts at the end point, okay? Draw through that second point you chose, and then when you have the line as long as you want it, you add one arrow, all right? These are pieces of lines, so there should only be one arrow on one end. Now let's look at the second piece, all right? This second piece has an obvious starting point and an obvious ending point. So these are gonna be the two points on this line. We don't have to choose a random point. Let's start with the beginning point, all right? What are the coordinates of where this piece starts? All right, he says negative three, negative four. So let's label it, but let's not plot it yet. So negative three, negative four. And again, where do we look to see if our line is open or closed? What is this called? The symbols are less than or equal to. So will our endpoints be open or closed? closed? They're closed because it's or equal to. Now, they're both going to be closed. So I'm just going to go ahead to the other end of this piece and I'm going to plot that point. And then what are the coordinates of that point? Okay, three, two. Now, you're just connecting these two points. This time you're not gonna have an arrow anywhere on this line because you're connecting one end point to the other. So take your ruler, it'll help you draw a straight line and connect the two end points. And then we've got one more piece, all right? We've got this piece over here. What is the point where this piece begins? What are the coordinates? We have three, negative two. But again, we gotta go look at the what to see if it's opened or closed. Boundary. The boundary, good. The boundary is greater than only. So will our circle or our point be open or closed? Open. This one will be open. All right, I need one more point from this line. Give me one more point. Five, negative four, negative four. 
Okay, we've got, I like four, negative four right here. So four, negative four. And again, take your ruler, start at the end point, that three, negative two, draw a line through your second point, And then once it's as long as you would like, put an arrow on the end. Now, we're not done until we find the domain and the range, okay? So remember, when you're finding domain and range, you're looking at this graph as a whole, all right? You're not looking at it in parts. You're looking at it as a whole. So the first piece goes off to the left. The middle piece is in the middle. And the third piece goes off to the right. So is there any x value that is not covered in this graph? If one graph goes to the left forever, You've got your piece in the middle, and then you've got a third piece that goes off to the right forever. Is there any value that X does not cover? No. no. So what's the answer for domain? All real, numbers. All real numbers. Awesome. Now, of course, it's the range where we have to actually stop and think. All right, and we learned yesterday, what value does range cover? Which set of values? The Y. The y. All right, so here's the question. Do I need the highest Y value or do I need the lowest Y value? Again, I'm looking at the picture as a whole, all right? If I find the highest Y value, that means all my other Ys are below that point. If I find the lowest Y value, then all my other Ys should be above that point. So what do you think, looking at this graph, do you think we need the highest Y value or do we need the lowest Y value? We need the highest. Very good. So what is the highest Y value on this graph? Three. Two. Up here is the highest point, and the Y coordinate is a two. So the question, are all my Y values less than that two, or are all of them greater than that two? They are less than the two. Last question, is it just less than, or is it less than or equal to? Why is it or equal to? Good. Again, that highest Y value of 2 is a closed point. So that is OR equal to. Ah. Since we graph, when we graph a piecewise function, we graph the boundary line first. Let's look at a graph and let's find it first. So again, where one graph or one piece stops and the second piece starts is going to be our boundary line. So the easiest thing for you to do is just go draw a line right through the end points, okay? So I'm gonna draw my boundary line and I'm gonna make it go right through those end points. Now again, it's vertical. So how do I write the equation of a vertical line? Come on, we've gone over this. Come on, you guys got this. How do we write the equation of a vertical line? X equals, now, where does this particular line cross the x-axis? Because that's what x is going to equal for the equation. Where does that vertical line cross the x-axis? Zero. So this boundary line is at x equals zero. Now that will help us write the boundary here in just a minute. But let's look at step number two. We're supposed to find the y-intercept, find the slope, and then write the equation of a line. So if we're going to be writing the equation of a line, Think for me. After we find the y-intercept and the slope, which formula do you think we're going to plug it into? Which form of a line are we going to plug it into? y equals mx plus b. We're going to plug the slope and the y-intercept into the slope-intercept form. Now, when I say the first piece, again, we're always moving left to right. So this is our first piece. We're gonna find the M and we're gonna find the B. So over to the side, I just want you to write M equals and I want you to write B equals. When you look at that piece, can you follow it and see where it crosses the Y axis? Yes. What value does it cross the Y axis at? It hits right here. What value is that on the Y axis? That is negative one. So your Y intercept is negative one. Now. We've got a graph and we want to find the slope. How can we quickly find the slope when we're looking at a graph? Rise over run. So you're going to go on that line and you're going to find one more point. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. It doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to use this one right here. And I'm going to rise and I'm going to run. So if I start at the top point, I'm going to rise or go down one, and I'm going to go to the right one. Now, what does that make the value? I went down one space, so that is a 
negative 1, and I went to the right one, which gives me a positive 1. So if slope is rise over run, what is my slope? Negative 1 over 1, or that simplifies to negative 1. Good. Now we have the M and we have the B. So, Chelsea, what is the equation of this line? There you go. Negative 1x, and we don't have to put the plus minus 1. We can just do minus 1. But we're not finished because this also has to have a boundary. So go ahead and put the comma and put the word if. Now, based on what we learned yesterday, what variable is always in the boundary? X. All right? X is always in the boundary because the boundary has to do with the domain. So every single boundary we write is going to have an X in it. The question, though, is what number is going to be in our boundary? Well, if we go back to the equation of our boundary line, what number is in the equation? Mm -hmm. So guess what number is in our boundary? Zero. That's where the line stops. Okay? This piece stops on that boundary line of x equals zero. So the equation number will be the boundary number. Now, the only other question is the symbol. Our piece goes off to the left. So is that larger, greater than zero, or is that less than zero? That is less than zero. Is it just less than, or is it less than or equal to? How do we know? The dot. The, dot. the end point is closed. So because the end point is closed, this is going to be or equal to. Now, circle this. Do not box it because it's not our final answer, but it is going to be part of our answer. We've got one more equation to write. We've got M equals and we've got B equals, all right? Reagan, can you see the Y intercepts of this second piece? And again, we're right here. This is the second piece. Where does that piece cross the Y axis? Two. At two, so your B is two, okay? We're gonna find another point on that line and we're gonna rise and run. So everybody on your own paper, pick a second point, do the rise and do the run until you find the slope. Okay, Reagan, you're going to help me. I just went down one, so that's what value? Um, negative one. Negative one, and I went to the left one, which is what value? One. Negative one. So what is my slope? Um, just one. Well, my rise is negative one, and my run is... So that equals what? Uh, zero. No, 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 just one. Just one. So the equation of this line, when we plug in our m and our b, is y equals 1x plus 2. Now, the if. We got a boundary. Again, what variable goes in our boundary? x. And what number goes in our boundary? 0. The equation of the boundary line was x equals 0. So that gives me the number for my boundary. This piece went off to the right. So is my x greater than 0 or are they less than 0? These are greater than 0. And is it just greater than or is it greater than or equal to? The circle is open. So it's just greater than. Now circle, again, don't box because that's not our final answer. Look at the final step. It says write the final answer in the correct form. So how do we write the final answer in the correct form? What do we start with? Y Not well we could, but we're going to we're going to put it in function form. So we're actually going to start with f of x. Cuz remember f of x and y are the same thing. Okay? f of x equals and then you got to put the brace. Okay? Now look, I'm not looking for perfection. I just look, I'm looking for something that is not a parenthesis and that is not a bracket. Okay? It's got to be a brace. Now, what is coming down behind the brace? So we need to bring down the rest of the equations and the boundaries. So Ashton, can you tell me which equation is coming down first? Y All right, now hold on. Don't say Y equals because Y equals has already been brought down. I just need the MX plus B part. Try again. There you go. So you're just bringing down the mx plus b part because I already have the y equals. Okay? So negative 1x minus 1 if x is less than or equal to 0. Joanna, what's the second equation that we're bringing down? Um, 1x plus 2 if x is greater than 0. And that is the final answer that you're going to box in. That 
is your piecewise function. Now that brings us to letter B. And how many pieces do you see in this graph? Three. Three. So how many boundary lines do you see? Two. Two. Remember, step number one is to find the bo a boundary line. So let's again draw, find where one graph stops and the other graph starts. And you're going to draw a boundary line right through those two endpoints. So there's one of them. And then we've got a graph that stops here and another graph that starts on this line. So there is your second one. Now, how do we write the equation of a vertical boundary line? X equals. X equals. But we've got two of them this time, so we've got to be careful. This first boundary line crosses what at the x-axis? Negative 2. So the first boundary line is at x equals negative 2. And the second boundary line crosses the x-axis at what? 1. One. Let's find the M and let's find the B of the first piece. Again, we're working left to right, so this is our first piece. Now, when you're looking at that piece of the graph, do you see where it crosses the y-axis? Does that piece actually cross the y-axis this time? No. no, it's cut off too short. However, here's what you're gonna do. Take that ruler in your hand, line up the ruler, all right? And you don't have to physically extend the line, but allow your eye to extend the line and tell me where it would cross the y-axis. So negative two is your y-intercept this time. Now, go back to the line. You've got an end point. You're gonna find one more point and you're going to rise and run to find your slope. So I'm gonna go down one, I'm gonna go right one. If I've gone down one, what number does that do I write down? And to the right one, is positive one. So what does that make my slope? Negative one. negative one over positive one or just negative one. All right, Noah, can you give me the equation of this line now that I have the slope and the y-intercept? Good, negative y equals negative one x minus two. Comma if, let's write our boundary. Now be very careful. What variable is always in the boundary? X, but we got to be careful about which number is in our boundary because we have two numbers this time. Okay, where does that piece, which boundary line does that piece run into? The negative two. So guess what the number in the boundary is? Negative two. The piece goes off to the left. So are my x values greater than negative two or are they less than negative two? Less than, just less than or less than or equal to? or equal to. Again, the end point is a closed circle, so it's or equal to. Now, before you get into m equals and b equals for this second equation, what kind of line is the second piece of our graph? It's a horizontal line. So how do you write the equation of a horizontal line? y equals. Very good, okay? Hoy, horizontal line has a slope of zero and an equation of y equals a number. So, the slope would be zero. Why waste our time plugging zero into the formula, taking the zero and the x out, when we can just write y equals? Now, what does y equal for this problem? Where does y cross the y-axis? Or where, I'm sorry, where does the line cross the y-axis? Two, so guess what y equals? Two, you're done. That's the equation of that line. The boundary, if, now the boundary is hard. Harder, okay? Because this piece starts at one boundary line and stops at the other boundary line. So this boundary is going to be a compound inequality, all right? What boundary line does it start at? Negative two. It starts at negative two. So the first thing you're writing down in the boundary is negative two. X is obviously gonna be in the middle because X is in all of our boundaries. And what boundary line does the piece stop at? The one, so one is also in your boundary. Now here's the question. Greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Start at negative two. If I start at negative two and I move across the graph, are my values getting larger or smaller? If I start here, they get larger. So X is greater than negative two. Now is it just greater than or is it greater than or equal to? 
Again, the circle, the end point is open, so it is just greater than. But what if I start at the one and I move across the graph? Those values are getting what? Less than. Less than. And again, this circle, the end point is open, so it's just less than. We're going to circle, not box. Now, the last one, we got to go back to M equals and B equals. Can we see the y-intercept on this third piece? Does the third piece actually make it to the y-axis? No. no. So again, take your ruler, okay, line it up with your line, and extend it to where you can see where it would cross the y-axis. Where would it cross the y-axis? Careful. It actually would cross at negative 3. So negative 3 is the y-intercept. All right, let's find the slope. There's another point. We're going to rise and run. Now, I went down two spaces, so what number do I write down? Negative, negative 2. And I went to the left, which is negative 1. So what is the slope of this line? Negative 2 over negative 1, which gives me what? Negative 2. Ethan, what's the equation of this line then? Y equals 2x minus 3. Good. And the boundary? If x, now what number is going in this boundary? Four. Good, 1. This piece hits the boundary line of x equals 1. So 1 is the number in the boundary. And the uh, piece goes off to the right. So Kendall. Are my x values larger than 1, or are they smaller than 1? Greater than, larger. And is it greater than or equal to, or just greater than? Or equal to. Again, the end point is a closed circle, so it's or equal to. Now, we circle this last equation and this last boundary, and all we have left to do is write our final answer. How do we start our final answer? F of x, keep going, equals, and then our brace. Sam, what's the first equation we're bringing down behind the brace? I forgot to circle it, so let me go back. Here's the first one. So what's the first equation I'm bringing down? Negative 1x minus 2 if x is less than negative 2. Less than or equal to negative 2. Good. Ashley, what's the second equation I'm bringing down? Okay, 2 if negative 2 is less than x and less than 1. Good. And the last piece, uh, Lily, that I'm bringing down. 2x minus 3 if x was greater than or equal to 1. Is greater than or equal to 1. Now, you're going to notice, because I had 3 to bring down, that my brace wasn't uh, long enough. So if you have to redraw your brace... Redraw your brace, but make sure all of your equations fit behind it. And this is your final piecewise function. And that's lesson 4.7.